we want to use a triple integral to determine the volume of the tetrahedron with the following four vertices. Let's first take a look at this in space. If we were to plot these four points, it would form this tetrahedron bounded by the blue plane and the three yellow planes, which are the three coordinate planes. So our goal here is to find the volume of this tetrahedron. Now, if we didn't have graphing software, we'd still want to graph this. So using the x, y, and z axes, we would plot these four points. So we have this point here at the origin. The x-intercept is 3, 0, 0 here. The y-intercept is 0, 4, 0 here. And the z-intercept is 0, 0, 5, which would be here. So this would be the tetrahedron, again, that we're trying to find the volume of. Notice how it's bounded by the first octant with the three coordinate planes and this plane here where we know the three intercepts. The volume of a solid region D is given by this triple integral where we integrate over the region D, which again is the closed solid region. Notice how the integrand function is just one and differential V can be any of these six possible orders of integration. So let's go and set this up as the volume V equals the triple integral And let's go ahead and include 1 as the integrand function. And let's use the order of integration of integrating with respect to z first, then y, and then x. Any order would work, but let's go ahead and use this order of integration. So now we'll determine the limits of integration for z. We'll notice how the solid is bounded by the xy plane, which would be z equals 0, and it's bounded above by this blue plane. So now we need to find the equation of this blue plane, which we can do because we know the intercepts. But again, we know the lower limit of integration with respect to z is going to be 0. And the equation of the plane with these three intercepts is given by this equation. So because the x-intercept is 3, we're going to have x divided by 3 plus the y-intercept is 4, so we have y divided by 4, plus the z-intercept is 5, so we have z divided by 5 equals 1. And now if we solve this equation for z, we can determine the upper limit of integration for z. Now, if we integrate with respect to a different variable first, we'd have to solve this equation for whichever variable we integrate with respect to first. But we'll solve this for z, so we'd have z divided by 5 equals 1 minus x divided by 3 minus y divided by 4. And now I'll multiply through by 5, so we have z equals 5 minus 5 thirds x minus 5 fourths y. Again, this is going to be the upper limit of integration with respect to z. And notice how we have z expressed in terms of x and y. So we have 5 minus 5 thirds x minus 5 fourths y. And now we need to find the limits of integration for y and x. To do this, we we'll want to have the xy trace. In general, to determine the xy trace, we set z equal to 0. So notice if z is equal to 0 for these four points, we'd only have three points to consider, 0, 0, 3, 0, and 0, 4. And I've already plotted these three points in the xy plane, so we can determine the limits of integration for y and x using this triangular region here. I also included the yz and xz traces. We don't need those for this example because of the order of integration that we're using. But if we change order of integration, depending on the order, we'd have to use one of these traces instead. We're going to need the equation of the line that contains this side of the triangle. There's two ways of doing this. We could set z equal to zero and solve this equation for a y, which would take some work. It's much easier to recognize that the vertical intercept is four and the slope would be down 4, right 3, so the slope is negative 4 thirds. So the equation of the line containing this side of the triangular region would be y equals 4, the vertical intercept, minus 4 thirds x. So with respect to y, we integrate from y equals 0 to y equals 4 minus 4 thirds x. So again, we have from 0 to 4, minus 4 thirds x. Notice how we express y in terms of x. And again, these are the limits of integration for y because this area in the xy plane is bounded below by y equals 0, 
and bounded above by y equals 4 minus 4 thirds x. And finally, the limits of integration for x would be from x equals 0 to x equals 3. So this triple integral will give us the volume of the tetrahedron. Let's evaluate this on the next slide. So we first integrate 1 with respect to z, which would just be z. So we have the double integral. And again, the antiderivative is z. Notice when we evaluate big F of B minus big F of A, we're just going to have this quantity minus a zero, which means for the double integral, the integrand function is just going to be the quantity five minus five thirds X minus five fourths Y. Now we integrate with respect to Y, treating X as a constant. So we'd have 5y minus 5 thirds xy, and then we'll have minus 5 fourths times y squared divided by 2, or 5 fourths times 1 half y squared, that'd be 5 eighths y squared. Now this starts to get messy. We need to find big F of b minus big F of a, so we'd have the integral from 0 to 3 of, we substitute 4 minus 4 thirds x for y, so we'd have 5 times the quantity 4 minus 4 thirds x minus 5 thirds x times 4 minus 4 thirds x, and then minus 5 eighths times the quantity 4 minus 4 thirds x squared. So there's big F of b, and then for big F of A, of course, each of these has a factor of Y, so we'll just get zero. Now let's go ahead and simplify all of this. Let's go ahead and distribute here and here, and then we'll go ahead and square the quantity four minus four thirds X. And now we'll distribute here and then combine like terms. And now let's combine like terms. So we have 20 minus 10, which is 10. And let's look at the x terms. These two x terms are opposites. So we just have minus 20 thirds x. Looking at the x squared terms, we have 20 ninths x squared minus 10 ninths x squared, which would be positive 10 ninths or plus 10 ninths x squared. And then finally, we get respect to x. So we'll have 10x and then minus 20 thirds times x squared divided by two, that's going to be minus 26 x squared, and then plus 10 ninths times x to the third divided by three, which is going to be 10 27ths x cubed. So when x is three, we have 10 times three minus, I know 26 simplifies to 10 thirds, but I'm gonna leave it as 26 times three squared plus 10 27ths times three cubed. So all of this minus, when x is zero, notice all the terms would be zero because each has a factor of x. And this simplifies perfectly to 10, which means the volume of the tetrahedron would be 10 cubic units. Which again would be the volume of the tetrahedron shown here, bounded by the blue plane and the three coordinate planes. I hope you found this helpful.